it's replacing this part where we would have said Dorcas also doesn't like it. But instead of using these words here in the second part, we just say neither does Dorcas. So Dorcas therefore replaces the whole of this part here from don't to it. That is substitution. Uh, this other one says, Salim has been to Eldred. So have I. The word so here replaces uh, the whole of this. Have been to Eldred. Actually, in under normal circumstances, we would, we would just say, or we would say, I have also been to Eldorate. But to avoid that, because it's already mentioned here, someone just says, so have I. So the, the word is, you know, so replacing a whole phrase or a whole group of words starting from has to Eldorate. So that is basically what substitution is about, replacing a group of words with one or two to avoid unnecessary uh, repetition. And it also helps in reducing, it helps in uh, avoiding clumsiness in speech. Um, we have an exercise, two questions. Let me get volunteers from your side to attempt this. Chome, if you can hear us, the first question. Brandon. Collins, okay. Uh, Liban, Liban. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you attempt this first question on substitution? Beth plays the drums and her sister Dash too. Uh, do two. Her sister? Do two. Um. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the, the subject verb agreement is not yes. Yes. Uh, subject verb agreement. High is singular. And the word do is plural. The word do is plural. So can you use the singular form? Beth plays drums. Liban, your answer is right, only that you that there is no agreement in terms of number between okay. sister and the verb you used here, which is in plural. Someone to to help us correct that. Liban um. or Alvin Kidake. Okay, Gerald. Gerald, Gerald is Beth there. Plays. Yes. Beth plays the drums and her sister does too. Exactly. Beth plays, you know, the drums and her sister does too. So that word is replacing plays drums. It's substituting these. Okay, number two. Somebody? Uh, Waiganjo, mm. yes, <laughs> Solomon. <laughs> okay, Kyle. Are, 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 yes, yes. Are those are, are those beautiful girls coming to the party? 
I hope so. Wonderful. I hope so. So that 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 is how we 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 you know we apply substitution. It is something very simple. The term may sound big, but the topic and the concepts are common, you know, issues that we we have every day. So that is substitution. I'll still give you more application questions on this. Uh, there's a whole exercise on this. Let's look at the next one or the next topic. I know, like I said before, before uh, about eight of you joined the group or the class, your teacher told me that she covered all this. I'm just going to rush you through so that we are sure that we are on the same page. So we have inversion. And here is an explanation. Inversion happens when the subject and the verb order uh, you know, is reversed. Uh, naturally, the subject should come first, then the verb, followed by the, the, the object. Actually, in, in sentence structure, we talk about the subject, verb, object, or the subject, verb, complement. Or sometimes, just a subject and a verb. And the, the smallest uh, sentence we can have is where we just have a verb. So these are some of the sentence structures we have, where we start with the subject, the verb, and the object. Maybe just to give an example, the, the normal order, uh, let me use Chome. Chome kicked the ball. Chome kicked the ball. Chome is the subject, kicked is the verb, and the ball is the object. This should be the, the normal order. This should be the normal order if we were writing the, the sentence. But now there are times when we have the verb come before the subject. That is when we'll say that inversion has taken place. Um, when the order is reversed, the verb comes before the subject, or the subject actually comes after the verb. And to achieve this, just like we did in substitution, uh, there are words that we use. We have time adverbs. We have words like, ne you know, uh, uh, never, never before, rarely, scarcely, barely, hardly, um, when, before, no sooner than, among many others. So we, we use these words and others to achieve inversion. Now, there are basically two types of inversion. One that involves the subject and the main verb, and another one that involves the subject and the auxiliary verb. Now, this one, as you can see, the subject interchanges position with the main verb in a sentence. E.g., the cat ran out. The cat here is the subject. Ran is the verb. Of course, out is an adverb. Uh, so it goes hand in hand with ran. Gives more information about ran. So here, when inversion applies, we get out ran. Here the verb is now coming first, the cat which is the subject. So if we were to analyze this sentence in terms of subject, verb, uh, object, order, we will have something like O, S, where 
I mean, not not yeah, not O S V S, where the verb comes first, then the subject. That is what we are calling inversion. As you can see, this is inverse. It's not like this order that we are using up here, uh, or this common order or stru sentence structures in English, where the subject comes first all the time, unless the verb is appearing alone in a sentence. And these are these are usually commands. Um, sentences like "get out," you know, that is a that is just a V. But now here, it is uh, a whole sentence, but with the verb coming first, followed by the subject. So when the main verb does that with the subject, we get the first type, that is the subject main verb in the inversion. Uh, this type can be used after, uh, you know, after exclamations with here, and there exclamations that have the words here and there for example here comes the teacher here comes the teacher naturally this should have been the teacher comes here but because it's an exclamation it will be here comes the teacher come appearing before the subject the teacher um we have another one here there goes the woman there goes the woman goes the main verb here comes before the woman so these two examples i think can sum up the type of inversion here, subject main verb inversion, as I've stated. Then we have this other type that involves the subject and the auxiliary verb. And I hope you all know what auxiliary verbs are. These are helping verbs, verbs that help the main verb communicate a message or something. Now, <clears throat> in this case, the subject swaps places with the auxiliary verb in a sentence and i think this is the commonly used uh, type of inversion in english it it is it is put to use more than the subject main verb inversion uh, examples here hardly had i began to speak when the when she interrupted me you can see this order here you know we, we we would have said i had hardly begun to speak when she interrupted me but now we say hardly had i had swapping positions with i mean position with i same thing happens here no sooner had I, no sooner had I, where we would have expected I being the subject to come first. I had arrived, then they started to cry. Now it is no sooner had I arrived, then they started to cry. Um, other uses of the same type of inversion, um, we can use this inversion after adverbios that express or adverbios expression, adverbial expressions beginning with only and not only. Uh, for example, only after I met her did I realize I knew her. Did I, instead of I did, realize I knew her? Only when the bus stopped did he calm down. He did calm down only when the bus stopped. So you can see the inversion is, is, is just involving an auxiliary and the main, I mean, and the subject. Otherwise, the main verb remains in its intact 
in, in, in its position uh, without any interference with the subject. Okay, it's also used, for this type of inversion is also used to ask questions. For example, did you see her? You here being the subject is coming after the auxiliary verb did. Otherwise, you can see the main verb C is in its position. Um, it's also used after words so, neither, no, it is a. For example, Daniela or Daniel has never been to China. Neither do I. Neither do I. So you can see that order into you know reversed in, in you know, uh, for that matter uh, more examples on inversion especially involving the, the auxiliary verb not until you grow up will you be allowed in here so will and you again have swapped positions naturally we would say you will be allowed in here now it is will you under no circumstance can you smoke here can and you the same rule as applied we have interchanged or reversed their positions little does he realize how beautiful she is does and she she does realize how beautiful she is that would have been the case naturally but now does is coming before she and that is what we call inversion let me allow somebody to ask a question hello if you're hearing me any question up to that point before we look at the exercise? Uh, yes. I have a question. Yes. In that sentence for Daniel has never been to China. Yes. Um, will it also be correct to say uh, Daniel has never been to China and uh, neither have I? Exactly. Neither have I. Actually, that should be the the case here because of oh. the use of yeah. By the way, you you're right because of the use of the perfective aspect here. This one, mm. yeah. yeah. The, this one should be how. It should yeah. be how. Thank you for that uh, correction. I, I didn't see uh, that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the sentence in itself is in the perfective aspect, so the second part should also be in the perfective aspect. So that should be mm. the case. Neither have I. Thank you very much. I, I, I would not have seen this. Another yeah, question? You're welcome. Yeah. And that, that is who? That is who? William. Oh, William. Thank you, William. Thank you, William. Uh, yeah. another, another question? Any other? uh maybe let me just uh, get, get some feedback from you is is this uh is this document here going to help you understand this notion of or this concept of inversion yes. Yes. does it help yes. you in understanding yes. inversion <laughs> yes yes okay thank you yes. so we have we have two three questions here <laughs> I'll get some volunteers to to respond. You write the sentences as instructed after each. Do not change the meaning. If you're keen, these are sentences you have. These are questions you have almost in a, every other exam. And no one ever tells you that they are testing on which grammar aspect. But now you know. Every other time you'll be seeing these kind of questions, know that they are either testing, uh, they are testing on substitution, version, 
or ellipses as we are going to see uh, thereafter. So somebody, uh, volunteer, a volunteer to attempt the, the areas, Calvin, Calvin N. Um, someone is knocking at the door, begin with the, uh, uh, there's someone knocking at the door. Very good. There is someone knocking at the door. Or, that is one. There's another answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Can you say? Yes. The, uh, there goes someone knocking at the door. Actually, even without using goes, it will just be okay if you say, uh, you say there knocks someone at the door. There knocks okay. someone at the door. Thank you. That is who? Who is that? Yes? Collins. Oh, Col Collins. Thank you. Thank you, Collins. You... You, you, you may not even use the word goes. You can just say, there knocks someone at the door. There knocks yeah. someone at the door. Inversion will have applied there, where someone is the subject and knock is the main verb and they have swapped position. Um, otherwise, if you use goes, uh, goes may also be used as the main verb in that case and therefore inversion will not have applied. Number two. Number two. Somebody. Seldom are they late. Yes, seldom are they late. Perfect. That is who. Gidemo. Gidemo. Thank you, Gidemo. Seldom are they late. Number three, I'm sorry, let, let me just confirm. Since I'm not the host, how can I have the names of the speakers always appear here? I just want to have them as someone speaks. What, what can I do to have them appear? As someone starts speaking, I see them. Put speaker view. Yes, speaker view. Okay, let me let me do that later. I can't see it uh, easily. Uh, let me avoid wasting time and, uh, and 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 continue. I'll come back to it later. Um, any question? I think we're done. Oh no, there's one more. The people went off in different directions. Off when the people in different directions. Perfect. That is who. Yusuf. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. That is correct. So that is. Uh, practically what you will be meeting in exams concerning inversion. And I think with this, uh, with this document, you can have the basics. Now, the next item, unless someone has a question, is uh, gerunds. Gerunds. Um, I remember the last time we, we, we were looking at the areas we would cover, we mentioned these and uh, Gidemo did a post or share a screen of the definition, a screen giving a definition. So a gerund is a noun, and it's a noun that ends with ing. It is formed by adding ing to a main verb. So anytime you get a verb ending in ing, and it is used as a noun. Know that the word is a gerund. I've given examples here. Reading, smoking, drinking, swimming, etc. Maybe before we, we even continue. Gerunds being nouns, 
they are either used as subjects or objects in sentences. Because they are nouns, they can perform the functions of subjects and objects in sentences. And maybe if you, for those who didn't know, <clears throat> it is only a noun that can perform these two functions. It's only a noun that can perform the function or the, the role of a subject and that of, a, of an object in a sentence. Except for special cases where we use some adjectives as nouns. But in that case, they have also been converted into being or into the class of nouns. So it's only a noun that can perform these two functions. And for that reason, therefore, can I have four people each giving a sentence with reading uh, either or each giving a sentence uh, on any one of these, either serving as a subject or as an object. Did, did I hear someone uh, say something? Somebody to use this sentence, I mean this word or this or this or this one as a subject or a noun. Maybe I should give an example. Let me use smoking. Smoking is not allowed here. Smoking is not allowed here. Smoking has been used as a subject in that sentence. Smoking is not allowed here. It's just like saying cows are not allowed here. So somebody, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. At least I can see the the speakers. So somebody, somebody who is, who is willing to do this for us. Just for the first one. Yes, the first one. That is Calvin. Uh, yes. Reading should be done often. Thank you. Reading should be done often. Correct. Smoking, I think I've already done that. Drinking, somebody. Or you still want to continue, Calvin? <clears throat> mm. Mm. Swimming is a good sport. Swimming is a good sport. Thank you very much. That's correct. Swimming is a good sport. Yeah. Uh, I think it's good. <laughs> I think we can see. <clears throat> Swimming is? Drinking. Oh, drinking. Drinking it's is good. what? <laughs> it's, it's good. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it's water. <laughs> drinking is good if it's water. Yeah. Yes. Natural water. <laughs> Not anything else. <laughs> hey, that is Keter. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Keter, I, I agree with you. Drinking uh, it's, a lot of water is good. It's good. <laughs> uh, I've given more examples here. Learning is important. Learning as a subject, or it has been used as a subject. The performers enjoy dancing. Enjoy dancing. You enjoy something. <clears throat> so dancing here is the object. Um, they preferred swimming to jogging. So the two here, again, have been used in, you know, in the place of objects, or they are used objectively you know, uh, in the objective case. Um, I want to say something that may sound difficult to remember, but maybe you will do. When you use, you have to be keen when you use these words. 
this ing form of words in the object position. Be keen to look at the the verb they follow. Um, and that's why I put this point here. I've said when an ing form of a verb is used as an adjective, it ceases to be a gerund and becomes a present participle. I hope you'll remember this. When an ing form of a verb is used as an adjective, it ceases to be a gerund and becomes a present participle. And I remember Gidemo again shared his screen when we were mentioning participles and I asked someone to explain what a participle is. And if you can remember what Gidemo shared, it stated that a participle is a form of a verb, a form of a verb that is used as an adjective. And there are two types of participles, the present and the past. Now the present is one that ends with ing. So the moment you use these forms of uh, verbs ending with ing, but they are now functioning as adjectives, they cease to be gerunds and become participles. There are two examples here. The speech was encouraging. Encouraging here is telling us more about the speech. It is describing the speech, which is actually an adjective. Unlike these two, where swimming and they are two different parties. One loves the other. So swimming is not giving us more information about they. Dancing is not giving us more information about they. Dancing is, is, is something they were doing. But here, encouraging is simply modifying the speech. It could be good. It could be bad. Actually, we can say the speech was good. Uh, same to this one here. <clears throat> Teaching is quite demanding. So demanding here is des describing teaching. And maybe another hint. Anytime you have these forms of auxiliary verbs, was, is, were, are, you know, they are usually, if they're used as the main verbs, uh, if they're used as the main verbs, they, they are followed by complements, and complements are adjectives. Complements are adjectives. I hope this point is clear here. I hope someone is able to differentiate a gerund from a present participle. Any question up to this point? Any question? <clears throat> If there's no question, then I request to rush you through participle clauses. Um, participle clauses. Uh, Stephen, Kedemo, do you think we still need to define a participle before we look at participle clauses? Do you think your friends still remember what a participle is? Maybe for those who are urgent. Maybe yes? for those who are urgent. For those who are urgent, uh, you may repeat. Okay. So a participle, like uh, we once said, uh, a participle is a is a, a verb used as an adjective. And actually, 
<coughs> these were okay there are two types we said there are two types we have the past participle and the present participle and our topic of course like i uh, said um is on participle clauses and they are actually these clauses are actually based on these types that we are talking about here if a clause involves a past participle then we'll talk about a past participle clause if a clause involves a present participle then we'll be talking about a present participle clause <clears throat> Um, maybe I just needed to give examples here. Uh, talk of, I don't know which one can I use. Let me use the word delighted. Delighted. Uh, I've used the word encouraging up there as a, as a verb, as, a, as an adjective, encouraging. Uh, I've used the word demanding. Uh, can give the word exhausted as an example. So these are these are these are examples of these are examples of participles. Um, the past participle uh, the past participle is usually formed by adding ed or d to a, a to a regular verb to a regular verb while this one uh, is formed by adding ing to a verb and maybe i like believing that i'm talking to students who are meeting the topics we discussing for the first time so when we talk of a regular verb we are referring to those that can form their past tense forms or past participles by adding ed or d otherwise the irregular ones may form their past tense forms in very funny uh, and unique ways so we will use the regular ones as our benchmark so um this is basically what i can tell them before we look at uh, our participle participle clauses so we are saying that a participle is one or more objects or modifiers form a participle clause in a way we are trying to say what a, a, a participle clause is but maybe to make it easier uh steven a clause yeah. yes a clause is a group of words with a definite verb in it a group of words with a verb in it a verb being a major part of that group of words we usually call them clauses now we have two types of clauses we have those that can stand uh, on their own as sentences to communicate a full sense and we have those that cannot stand on their own we usually call them subordinate or yeah subordinate clauses or yeah subordinate clauses so those are clauses that uh, 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 cannot stand on their own now participle clauses are actually under subordinate clauses it's a clause that cannot stand on its own to communicate a full sense and what makes it a clause i just want to repeat this is the fact that there is a verb in it though that verb is used as an adjective uh, look at this example here the cat 
eating meat and fish belongs to me. Eating is the, is the participle. Eating is the participle in this clause. Actually, you can have this clause here removed from this sentence and the sentence will still have its meaning. So there are two clauses in this sentence. We have the cat belongs to me and eating meat and fish. So the two are joined to form one sentence. So this one is the one we are referring to as a participle clause. And if we were to categorize it, because it is introduced by an, a, 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 a participle that ends in ing, then we would say it is a present participle close. Now, <clears throat> maybe just to clarify or to make it simpler for those who, are, who, 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 who may have problems getting to understand this issue, this notion of clauses, a clause is usually categorized by the way it begins. Like there are times when we talk about relative clauses. Relative clauses are introduced by relative pronouns, and that's why they are called relative uh, clauses. Now, participle clauses are called so because they are introduced by participles. And you will see that all the time, all the examples we'll be giving here, they will just be clauses introduced by uh, participles. Like we can look at this one down here. A participle clause modifies nouns. In, uh, in the examples below, the participle clauses are underlined while the words modified are in bold text. Now here, uh, they are saying, washed with soap and water. That is the participle clause. And if we were to categorize, we just look at the word introducing it. Watched, it is in the past. So if we were to categorize, we will say that this one is a past participle clause. Um, the next one is the house painted yellow and white appeared new. So this is the clause and it's giving adjective of, you know, information about the house modifying the house and that's why in the first place we define uh, participles as adjectives their work is just to give more information about uh, a subject or a noun so these are two examples of past participles with one example of a present participle here used in a sentence um, <clears throat> we we have some more information here. Okay, participle clauses or participle clause. A participle clause functions as, as an adjective or participle clauses function as adjectives um, in sentences or in a sentence. A participle clause is used to combine two or more sentences or to shorten them. Uh, and I'm just trying to mention a few functions. You don't need to, to cram them. You, the most important thing is what we have seen here. How do you form a participle clause? And how does it appear in a sentence? What does it do in that sentence? So I think this is repetitive. The function is adjectives. More examples here. <clears throat> and these examples are actually uh, typical questions, KCSE questions that we you are likely to have, uh, where you are given two clauses and they ask you to join them uh, using participles or they actually begin the sentences for you. They'll ask you to rewrite these two as one beginning sitting. So the answer, of course, uh, will, will be uh, or will require that you form a participle. So in this case, it's a present participle sitting in his office 
the principal sent the secretary to call Jonathan. Another one here, I forgot my pen at home. I borrowed a pen from Elian. Having left my pen, actually it should have been I left. Uh, having, having left my pen at home, I borrowed one from Elian. The author is being interviewed. The author is a Caribbean. The author being interviewed is a Caribbean. The author being interviewed. So being interviewed is the clause there. Uh, if you were to be clear. Um, have you read this novel? It was written by Margaret Ogola. And when joined, it will be, have you read this? Oh, it should be novel. Love of poems. Uh, have you read this novel written by Margaret Ogola? So uh, I think this is a good example of participle clauses appearing in questions. So written by Margaret Ogola is the participle clause. You can see it is introduced by the word uh, written, which is in the past participle, um, an irregular word. I am a vegetarian. I don't eat meat. Uh, being a vegetarian, I don't eat meat. So that is, that is a, that is uh, another example. Being a vegetarian, that is the participle clause. You can say it is a present participle clause because of the ing form that comes at its beginning. Otherwise, the main clause is I don't eat meat. Um, okay, I mentioned this earlier that owing to the two types of participles, there are also two types of participle clauses. So the present participle clause or clauses are introduced by the present participle. And I've given examples using uh, a boat. <coughs> using a boat, they crossed the river safely. Wishing to apologize or to apologize she walked quietly towards the lover or towards her lover. So these two, as you can see, are introduced by <clears throat> the present participles and therefore they fall under present participle clauses. Um, then we have the past participle clauses. I think we've already discussed this. Uh, in having been introduced by the present at uh, the past participle, they form a, uh, the past participle clause. So that is, that is the case here. Delighted at the prospect, he quickly paid the fee. Delighted, it's a past participle, introducing this clause here, this clause here. So this clause here becomes therefore a past participle clause. Um, any question up to this point? Any question up to this point? Uh, I have a question. Yes, Kyle. Um, uh, if you could please scroll up. Somewhere here. Okay. please uh, scroll up again yeah um a, a bit a bit lower oh somewhere. to where we were dealing with uh yes there um the example that reads i left my pen at home i borrowed oh, yeah. a pen from elianto yep, let me see let me see elianto yes i'm here i left my pen at home i borrowed I borrowed a pen from Elianto, yes. What's your question there? Um, 
my question is uh will it be okay for you to say leaving my pen at home i borrowed one from eliento yeah leaving my pen at home i borrowed one from eliento i think that uh, the difference here okay the sentence grammatically it's okay it's correct that clause is correct but i i don't know whether mm -hmm. uh, semantically that is in terms of the, the meaning the exact tense here uh, mm -hmm. i don't know whether that the tense will agree because here it's like uh -huh. the reason the guy is borrowing the pen is because he left he or she left he's at home but now he has to write so he borrows one so it's like one action happened before the other uh, kyle are you getting me yes yes i am yes yeah so to have that 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 aspect of one action happened before the other uh we now use having the perfective aspect otherwise yours yours is correct but now it suggests that the borrowing may have happened at the time when he was he or she was leaving the pen at home mm -hmm. it's like the two okay. actions are happening at the same time okay oh, let me say simultaneously all right yeah thank you uh, maybe just to to to, to maybe to convince you more so i know you're already convinced let's say someone is hit by a car while they are crossing the road you see you will say crossing the road comma the person was hit by a speeding a speeding car this this one kyle is yes. now the situation that shows two actions happening simultaneously the mm -hmm. hitting and the crossing happened at the same time but okay. here the pen was first left then the borrowing came later so I, I hope I've now convinced you more. Yes, yes, you have. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any other question? Any other person with a concern? Okay. I think, because I can see time is also running, um, I don't know. Uh, Stephen, can you guide us do i stop here so that we continue from there tomorrow oh no the next time we'll meet there's another lesson this week we might continue yeah yeah i'm told there's another there's another lesson this week right yeah so kidemo i'm going to forward this document to your teacher so that they can you can have it and just go through the questions in advance. When we meet, we'll have uh, an easier time uh, finishing up on this. It's a very short topic, but there's a list of questions that I may want to give you thereafter. Um, and then, Gedemo? Yes, yes. Uh, your teacher, I'm just summing up, uh, I think we, we can consider the lesson closed. Um, uh, your teacher told me that she has covered some of the things we had mentioned or we had listed with you. So if you don't mind, you can just have a list of those that you feel we should start with and send them to Madam Magoon. I'll get them immediately. Or, or if you think that the things we listed with you uh, have to be done, then I'll you'll not need to 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 write me the list because I I I think I have the list. So what do you think? I'll I'll I'll, I'll send the list. Yeah, because it was a it was on writing, uh, functional writing, and some grammar aspects. 
I'm I'm willing to even take you through essay writing if you okay. Poetry, I have all these. So if uh, if you okay, I'll I, I'll do that. But if you have your own, uh, you know, preferred items, let me get them in advance so that I prepare something on them. Okay. Is that okay, Gidemo? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, should I now leave the meeting? <laughs>